lesson discusses some key vocabulary for circles. So just a review of what we talked about last time. We talked that a circle is not a polygon. It has curves. So last week and yesterday we talked about quadrilaterals. We talked about polygons. Now we're moving into circles, which are not polygons. So go ahead and take out your notes. And our objective today is the student will identify parts of a circle. And today, the 28th, January. Alrighty. So, first thing that we're going to talk about is what the distance between any point on the circle to the center is called. So go ahead and ask yourself, do you know what it's called, this distance right here, from a point on the circle all the way to the middle of the circle, the center of the circle? So in other words, in this figure, what AB, what that length is called. So if you said radius, you are correct. Here's the radius. Okay, this time, if we connect two points on the circle, and it must go through the center, what would C be? That length right there, the distance across the circle through the center. See if you know what that is called. And that length is called the diameter. So I typically, the way that I remember which one is which, is this length is longer, and that word is longer than radius. So radius is the shorter one, but it has to use the middle, just like this one does. This one just goes all the way across. So if the radius was 2 centimeters, then a diameter is comprised of two radiuses, one there and one there. So the length of a diameter is double a radius. So the diameter would be four. Okay, the next vocab word about circles that we're gonna discuss is what it's called when you take any point on the circle and connect it with any point, another point on the circle, what this is called right here. Notice we are not going through the center. So a line segment that joins two points on a circle is called a chord. So a diameter is a chord. It says the distance across the circle through the center. Whereas a chord is a line segment that joins two points on a circle. So a diameter meets this definition right here. A diameter is a line segment that joins two points on a circle. So this can, is a chord as well. But this cannot be called a diameter. It doesn't go through the circle. But this is certainly a chord. This is not a diameter, though. So a, diam a chord could be a diameter if it goes through the center. Okay. The next topic that we are going to talk about is what a little portion around the circle is called. Like this little portion right there. So going all the way around the circle, the distance around the circle, just like the distance around 
we were going to find the distance around a triangle. So go all the way around. That is called perimeter. However, with a circle, there's no sides. We can't add up sides. So we call it, cir uh, we call it circumference. So if we don't want to go all the way around and we just want a little portion on a, around a circle, that is called an arc. So a part of the circumference of a circle is called an arc. So when we um, write an arc, so if we want to talk about arc A, B, we put a little arc over it. It's a little curved line there. Now, AB, we would know that this is AB because if we go from A to B all the way around this way, this would be called arc A, C, B. So those are the two arcs, two different arcs on the circle. So this one is a, B, and then the longer one, this one right here, if we want to go from A to B this way, then it's called A, C, B. So when we go all the way around a circle, think about someone who turns all the way around. Someone could say when they turn all the way around that they did a 360. So that helps me remember that there are 360 degrees around a circle. So going all the way around a circle is going around 360 degrees. So if we create an angle and we create an angle that is formed with the center of the circle, angle formed with the center of the circle. So if I take the center of the circle and connect it to two points on the circle and make an angle right here, this angle right there is called a central angle. And if you think about it, it looks like the word center. So it's an angle that is created with two points on the circle and the center. So what we know about this angle measure right here, if I know this angle measure right here is 50 degrees, then I know if this angle is 50 degrees, that this arc measure is also 50 degrees. So the measure is the same. The central angle measure is the same as the intercepted arc, this arc right here that is intercepted by these two points in between these two points right here. So this angle is the same as this arc measure. And we'll do some more practice with this in a moment. So if we go down here to the bottom of our note, it says, examples one through three, given the measure of angle ABD, so ABD, so given that this angle is 160 degrees, it says we should be able to answer the following question. So find the measure of arc AD. So arc AD, so we want to know what this measure is. And the mar measure of arc AD, since this right here is a central angle, because it's using the center of the circle, we know that if this is 160, then this is 160 degrees. So someone who spins that amount is doing a 160. Okay, then we're asked to find the measure of angle CBD. So go ahead and take a second to think about how would I figure out what this angle right here is? Okay, 
Okay, so let's see what you were thinking about here. So if we look at this circle here, it's saying that this angle here is 160. So this angle here is 160. Now we should come into this class knowing that a straight line has an angle measure of 180. Because if I go from here, this angle right here, plus this angle right here, isn't that half of a circle? And if a whole si a circle is a 360, then half of a circle, half of 360, 360 divided by 2, half of 360 would be 180 degrees, a straight line like that. So if this is 160, then we would know if we take 160, that this whole thing is 180, that if we take 160 away from 180, we would be left with 20 degrees. So the measure of this angle here is 20 degrees because it makes a straight line for these two angles together to make 180. Okay, then we're asked to find the measure of arc AC. So the measure of arc A all the way to C. And remember, we know it's going this way and not this way because D is in the way there. So this would be arc ABC. So that's how we know we're going this way. So if we look from here to here, that is half a circle. And half of a circle is not 360. Half of it is 180. Let's go back to our vocab here now that we've practiced um, some with central angle. Our next vocab word is intercepted angle. And an intercepted angle, so if we look at our picture here, doesn't go through the center. It is created using three points on the circle, whereas this one was through the center. So this is an intercepted angle here. So it is the angle measure here that's created with those three points. So it's formed by two chords. So that's a chord, and then that's a chord. So it's formed by two chords that meet at a common point that is on. So here's the difference. It's on the circle, whereas this one is created with the center. So there is a special relationship here. If this arc measure here is 60 degrees, so spinning that much is 60 degrees, then spinning this much here is half of that. So if this is 60, this angle measure is 30 degrees. So these ones are the same, whereas these are the relationship here. The measure of an intercepted angle is half of the intercepted arc. So this is half of that. So let's go ahead and do a little practice here. So given the measure of angle D, H, and J is 70 degrees, find the measure of the arc, the intercepted arc right here. So go ahead and figure that out. What would that arc measure be? So if this angle here is 70, then this angle here is twice that amount. So if this is 70 degrees, this arc amount would be 140 degrees. Okay, we got two last vocab words here. The next vocab word is what the line, what a line is called that intersects a circle one time. So this right here. 
only touches the circle one time. Now, we're really not going to use this in seventh grade, but it is a word that they want you to be familiar with so that when you use it in, you guys will take geometry in ninth grade, um, you're already familiar with that word. So a line that touches the circle only at one point is called a tangent line. Whereas a line that cuts through the circle and touches the circle two times, that is called, a line that intersects the circle two times is called a secant line. And that is all we need to know about this. We don't, we're not going to use it or anything in this class. We just need to be familiar with what those words are at this level. So this one is a tangent, and this one is an example of a secant line. Now, it is easy for me to remember which one is which, because this word starts with S-E-C. And if you're second, in line, you're the second person. So that's how I remember that this one goes with two points. So it has to go through the circle twice. Alrighty, now would be a wonderful time to pass out the homework. And you have the remainder of the class to work um, to get started on your homework. Remember the answer key is posted in the back. One person at a, at a time can go check their answers, or if they're stuck on a problem, um, go get some help back there and see if that can help you with the problem. Um, if you have any further questions, remember you can log on to Edmodo. And even though I'm not here, I'll have my phone and hopefully I can get back to you if you have questions from your homework. All right, have a great day.